Now this might sound alarmist to the people who don't know any better, but you have to consider what I'm telling you as the equivalent of a big rock coming through space. And we look for rocks perpetually throughout the last hundred years. We have looked for celestial events and we are familiar with that. And we now consider that a rock coming from outer space as a real threat if it impacts just one part of our planet. What I think of Fukushima is no different, except it's a really big rock and it's coming at us really fast. Most people have no concept of what nuclear means. Most people are just happy and they're trying to make it through the day and take care of their loved ones or their personal lives and they don't have time to look at the whole picture of what's really happening on our planet and the importance of that and the significance. This is Chernobyl, a part of Chernobyl's dump. And all of this equipment you see there was used. The helicopters was over 600 pilots who died trying to dump boric acid and concoctions on Chernobyl's 30% meltdown, melted core. Chernobyl was one third the size of any of the reactors at Fukushima. These people really don't know what they're up against. There's 600,000 of these conscripted, and they were put to war against a machine that has never lost a war. We're fighting an enemy that doesn't know how to lose and that takes over the planet in increments over time. Japan was hit by an earthquake, followed by a tsunami, followed by three meltdowns. Reactor 1, 100% meltdown to a million sievers out in front. 500 sievers can kill you. Unit 2 stayed intact, but it's 100% meltdown, and the fuel pools are melted down, and nobody has ever been inside. Unit 3 is obviously 100% meltdown, and is missing its top six, seven floors. These are 10-story buildings. Unit 4, right alongside of it, in the bottom right-hand corner, was 100%, as you can see, destruction. And its fuel pool, it didn't have any rods in the reactors, but his fuel pool had fires and obviously detonations. And this is very toxic for a very long time. So we have four reactors in heart attack mode. All of these reactors had their basements busted by the earthquake and are filling up with water. And because of the radioactive materials all over those sites, the radioactive water is extremely toxic. It's aerosoled into the environment and hemorrhaging into the ocean has a very very long life and throughout history we have dumped this stuff into our oceans. These ships are not carrying just a single barrel. The history of waste and dumping it into our oceans is extraordinary. Now we have Fukushima reactors 1, 2, 3 and 4 releasing toxins into our ocean and unit 5 and 6 is also releasing radioactive material into our ocean because they had their backs broken and filled up with radioactive materials. All of these reactors are in trouble, but one, two, three, and four are leaking directly into our ocean. The site is covered in rods and pieces of the rods releasing neutrons and x rays and splitting atoms. After three years, there was no way to contain this. There was no science on the planet to work on it, and the entire planet is shunned from trying to get in there and find out what's actually happening. It's 400 to 1,000 tons a day hemorrhaging into your ocean. And that's equivalent to St. Paddy's Day every minute, 1,440 minutes a day. Just imagine if that did not dilute for 1,000 years like radiation. And just imagine if that didn't lose its brightness for 1,000 years like radiation. About 1,000 pounds a minute of radioactive dye. At what point does it fill up that ocean? At what point is this going to be a problem? And there is no way to stop this in the near future. The radionuclides are picked up, up and carried by thousands of miles of rain every day on our ocean. Can an ocean sustain that? Absolutely not. And just because you can't see it, just because you can't smell it or pick it up or touch it, doesn't mean what I'm telling you is not so. Because you have to get it off the ship because it's so dangerous. Now we have Fukushima hemorrhaging directly into the ocean from three melted cores. And each of these melted cores are three times the size of what they had in Chernobyl. 
And unit 3 is MOX fuel at the very top there. This is 2 million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Now you use 600 pilots and 600,000 soldiers conscripting them and gave them cancers. But you done it in 15 to 20 second increments. And then they went home. Canada got busted covering up spikes in Fukushima radiation. They had done a survey right along the coastline and showed evidence of sharp features in the Fukushima plume. The plume over southwestern British Columbia. That's Health Canada talking about this. On the 18th and 19th, they flew along the coastline for 18 hours and they found radioactive materials all around the coastline. And they got called out for it, for not telling anybody a couple of years later. It's not just the ocean, it's the animals, it's the little tiny creatures, the flannas, the floras. It's everything on this planet is affected by this radiation that has constantly hemorrhaged out of there. We didn't pay our government to turn their back on us. We didn't pay our government to turn off the radiation detecting, detection networks across North America. We didn't pay our governments to hide this from us. We paid them to go out and make sure that if it happened, we would know about it. And they turned their back on us. Oh yeah, go on, click the subscribe button. We need to get subscribe and get this unity stronger and beat YouTube at their own game. Okay, that's what this is about. Like I say, go to the remix button, hit the remix button. That way you'll have this video and, and keep up with this. Otherwise, you know, YouTube's just going to control us, guys, and it's, it's really bad.